So we're gonna just keep going with this theme of indice equations, okay? We're just dealing with indices. So we're looking at solving equations using index laws, right? Where, again, we'll just look at our learning goal. I will solve equations involving indices with and without technology, okay? We're gonna focus on the without technology part today. Solve the following equation without technology, okay? And we'll put three X, threes have X plus one, equals 81, okay? Well, in order to solve these equations using indices, we need the base number to be the same. And so, at least in this case here, all right, I can spot that 81 is equal to three to the power of four, okay? And when you write it out like this, three X plus one equals not 81, but three to the power of four, okay? Just by a deduction, you can say that you've got x plus one has to be the same as four, okay? Because three to the power of this is equal to three to the power of that. It kind of just follows that you then you've got x plus one equals that. So that's our therefore deduction, okay? They kind of lead on, and you just say you've got x equals three. Then you get some that are a little bit trickier, okay? That you kind of see, we need the base number to be the same, okay? And so, have a look, I'll do this in a green. I've got eight, okay, I've got two, and I've got 64, okay? They can all have a base of two, because eight is equal to two to the power of three, okay? Two times two times two gives you eight, and 64 is equal to two to the power of six, you then make the substitution. So then you go, well, we've got two to the power of four X multiplied by, not eight. We introduce some brackets. Two to the power of three, okay, not eight, two to the power of three. And then that's X minus one is equal to one over, bring that up, one over two to the power of six. Okay, probably don't need brackets there, but it's just have it. Simplify it out, two to the power of four X, multiplied by two to the power of three X minus three is equal to, uh, I say one over two to the power of six. Okay, keep simplifying it out. Here we've got two to the power of seven X minus three. Okay, that's equal to, well, here we've got two to the power of six on the denominator. Okay, if we got rid of the denominator, we could just say it's two to the power of negative six. Then we can draw the same conclusion where we've got, well, this power has to be equal to that power because two to the power of that is equal to two to the power of that thing. So then you go, therefore, seven X minus three is equal to negative six. So seven X equals negative three. Okay, so X is equal to uh, negative three sevenths. And so then we get to a question like this. Okay, well, first off, just to highlight 16 to the power of x and four to the power of x. Okay, those are my only two terms raised to the power of x. So what I am gonna do is I'm just gonna write this as four to the power of two x, okay, because 16 is four squared, and then everything else is the same. Okay. Not immediately obvious how we're actually gonna solve this, okay, because we're gonna solve it equal to zero. What I might do, just to spell it out a little bit easier, is we've got four to the power of two x minus two times of four to the power of x minus eight equals zero. Okay, and I can, I can actually write this as four to the power of x squared, okay, minus two multiplied by, Four to the power of x, and I'm putting brackets here to make it as obvious as I can. Because what I am going to do is use substitution to solve this. I'm going to let four to the power of x equal k. K is just uh, picked out a random letter, k. When I substitute it in, I get k squared minus two k minus eight equals zero. And we can see our equation that initially looked like an indice, we actually needed quadratics to solve it without technology. 
we can factorize this quadratic. We say that's k. Okay, so using the null factor, we get k equals 4 or k equals negative 2. I really want to highlight this is that k is 4 to the power of x. Okay, so we haven't quite solved for x yet. Alright, so what this actually means is well, we've actually got not k equals 4, but 4 to the power of x equals 4 and or 4 to the power of the x equals negative 2. So this one over here we can just write it off, that's not possible. Okay, so there's no solutions on that side of the quadratic. But here we'll, this is 4x equals 4 to the power of 1, so x is, is equal to 1. Okay, um, so I guess we can say we're going to accept that one, we're going to reject that one. And overall, our solution, therefore, solution is x equals 1.